Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. Today we're going to talk about your short game. We are talking about those short little shots that you shoot that get you through a rack. Now, I wanted to give you guys a tight shot on that rack there, just so that you could see just how random those balls are. Now, I did a video a while back teaching you how to rack an eight ball and split the balls up uh, so that the low balls go to one end and the high balls go to the other. But we did not load this rack in any way, nor do we do it in any of our runout videos. We were just fortunate enough to have all of the low balls, all the solids, at one end of the table and all within about a foot of each other. Very often, the closer the balls are, the more difficult it is to find these patterns. And I know a lot of you play APA and BCA and other leagues where you're on seven foot tables all the time and the balls are clustered up and you need to find patterns that you're not accustomed to playing. If you practice at home on a nine foot table and then you go and find yourself on a seven foot table to play a match, the balls are the same size, but the table is much smaller. Therefore, the balls end up being a lot more clustered together and you need to find good patterns because you don't have the opportunity to use multiple rails in some of the strategies that you might use if the balls were spread out a little bit more. So work on those close ball patterns so that you have all of these shots in your game. I did a video recently on how to play short draw shots. Well, the reality is the short draw shot is very important as you saw at the beginning of this run, but just as important is your stun shot, those follow shots, those shots that you don't get to let your stroke out. So often we opt for shots that will allow us to get our strokes out over shots that we have to play with a delicate touch. In nine ball, the balls are usually spread out a lot more, but in eight ball and in straight pool especially, the balls are gonna be clustered together, they're gonna to be much closer, and this is actually one of the things that keeps a lot of nine ball players from being good straight pool players. They're not accustomed to the series of over and over again having to shoot short little shots that they don't get to let their stroke out on. So I am going to finish off this rack on the screen and then I will go through shot by shot how we played each of those shots, identified our patterns and played the balls that were all together for our short game and then the balls that were separated so that we can look at some of the differences that come into play when the balls are clustered up or at the minimum at one end of the table and when the balls are evenly spread out as we saw with the stripes. And also, I'll talk to you about how you can practice playing in situations when the balls are all tied up like this. So let's get started. Starting out with our break, again, this was just a fluke. The balls just came off of cushions, rolled down, got tapped, all ended up in the same area, all except the four ball, which is at the opposite end of the table, but makes for a great key ball here. So the first thing I do is I look at this pattern and I'm already thinking about how am I gonna get on the four because that's gonna be my key ball. So now I'm running these off as if I'm playing straight pool. I've got that six ball on the rail. I wanna take care of that as soon as possible. This is just a series of short little shots. But this is where you guys have to be able to step out of the box. The five, the one, the seven, because they're so close to each other, they limit the spots they can go into. So you need to think outside the box. I know you wanna shoot those, in corners and side pockets at this end of the table. But very often, the best shot when you have balls that are even close to the cue ball is at the other end of the table. This pattern gives you a perfect run out as long as you are willing to shoot that five ball and the one ball to the other end of the table. If I went out of my way to try to get on that one in the side or play that five in the closer corner, I would have had a situation where I could have ended up clustered up and not had an opportunity to run out at all. So we get perfect position on this four. We come off the rail, and once again, because we have a good angle, 
I don't need to play any special English on that shot in order to get this position on the eight. In fact, the shot on the eight is going to be one of the first ones that I even use any English at all. I'm going to put a little outside on this to throw it to the pocket, which is the way I shoot just about any cut shot. So we spot the eight and run the rest of the rack. You guys know how I play these. You need to practice this way because APA Freddy likes to shoot all of his balls off the table and then miss the eight ball. And shooting the balls this way simulates what happens when a player shoots all his balls off the table and leaves us with a wide open table to run. I'm just getting on these first couple balls that I consider problem shots. Here, the nine, I just play it in because it's on the rail. And now I'm gonna pass on the 13 and play the 15. Why am I playing this shot next? Because I tell guys all the time, don't go back and forth up and down the table. I'm playing this because it gets me perfect position on the 12. And the 12, even though it's makeable from a couple directions, it really needs to go in one of these corners and it needs to get there as soon as possible. So how are you gonna practice your short game? Very simple. You're going to throw balls on the table. At one end of the table, you'll throw the low balls, the solids. At the other end of the table, the high balls, the stripes. If any cross the line of the mid table, just bring it back to the other side of the table. Place the eight ball in the center of the table and just work on shooting the balls off one end and then the other. Now, if you guys want to put a pattern together to shoot these balls off, you can do that. But I don't recommend giving yourself any kind of symmetry. You want it to be as random as possible, or you're going to be very good at shooting that particular pattern. So hit us in the comments. Give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, this is your opportunity. Go ahead and do it because your competition is watching each and every video. Have a great day, and again, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys. Nice run out, Brian.